Meet Me at Christmas is a pretty enjoyable film. This was released originally in 2020. It's directed by Annie Bradley and written by John Elliott Jordan and Jennifer Aspen. And this stars Catherine Bell as Joan and Mark Declan as Bo. And I really enjoyed pretty much all of this, but there's something, an attitude that Joan has that I don't agree with. And she has anxieties about being truthful with her son about something. But because I don't agree with her perspective, it meant that there were bits of the narrative that really didn't sit right with me. And I'll discuss what I mean by that with a spoiler warning. It's not a huge spoiler, but it is a, a slight spoiler. So I'll keep that back for just now. Joan is helping to plan her son's wedding. And she ends up working with Bo, who is the, the bride's uncle. They have to spend a lot of time together to get everything ready for this Christmas wedding. I think the planning and preparation aspect of it was really fun. I think weddings are a great setting for rom-coms. I just always find watching everything come together as they get the decor ready and the dress ready and the catering. For somebody who doesn't care about weddings, I'm rather obsessed with wedding-based rom-coms and it absolutely works so well here as the narrative and having it with a Christmas theme meant that we had a lot of Christmas decor and we have some lovely Christmas music. For the film, it worked well and the elements all combined together as our romantic protagonists, Joan and Bo, are both really likeable, both separately and when they're together. And there's actually a history between them that they don't realise to begin with. It takes them a little bit of time to, to realise they were connected in the past. And to begin with, we get a flashback, which is really good. I think it's a nice way to establish things. But then we get the flashbacks at several points throughout the narrative. And I really hated it. I don't like flashbacks at the best of time. Obviously, if they add something to the story, like it did at the beginning of the film, that's great. But when you're flashing back every couple of scenes. That's a slight exaggeration, but it is definitely more than I cared for. It just gets a bit irritating because it didn't really add anything. I understood how they were feeling without needing those flashbacks. So I don't think they added anything. I didn't like them, but they are, well, while I say they're too frequent, they're not so frequent that it affected my overall enjoyment of the film. But as a point of criticism, I don't feel like they served any purpose and it just pulled us away from the main narrative and they didn't add anything. But they weren't so frequent that it ruined the flow of the story in general. But I would rather they hadn't been there. Other than that, it's a really, really good film. The thing that I didn't like, so I guess I'll mention now with a spoiler warning, I'll sum up very briefly. Meet Me at Christmas is a lovely narrative. The wedding aspect is great. The Christmas aspect is beautiful. The characters are really likeable and everything generally flows really well, minus the flashbacks, apart from the first flashback. And I ultimately came away feeling satisfied that I'd watched a really enjoyable film. So definitely worth checking out. So the spoiler, it's not really something that bothered me too much. But because I was so opposed to this idea, it meant I was no longer emotionally connected to that character. I wasn't following their journey as much. And this is actually towards the end of the film. So this is a spoiler. And this is the fact that Joan was connected with Bo in many years. I think it was 26 or 28 years later, we're told at the beginning of the film. So nearly 30 years ago, they met and it was love at first sight. But then quickly they were separated. And I won't spoil the ins and outs of that. But Joan believes that you only get one chance at true love. And at that point, I thought, well, that's not true. Because... Think of all of the people who have been married and they've had a really happy relationship. Something's happened to their partner, as is the case with Joan. And then they do go on to find true love with somebody else. And I think that that's actually really offensive to think you can only have one chance at true love. Because what if your true love had had a previous love? So that might be your one and only. But what if that person had been in a relationship before you and that was their one true love so they might be your one true love but by that logic you're not theirs and that's just nonsense and it's really disrespectful to have that opinion because that's like saying somebody isn't allowed to love you truly if they've loved somebody else truly and I just really hated that perspective and I lost a bit of respect for her you know everybody's allowed their own opinion 
but when it's damaging and could really hurt somebody, then I don't agree with that at all. And that's not to say Joan doesn't start to come around to this idea, but also if she's in her own, like her husband, her son's father, was her one true love, as she's claimed throughout, and she didn't want her son to find out about this previous encounter with Bo because she was worried her son would think her husband wasn't her one true love. But now she's starting, or this romantic relationship with Bo is beginning, so does that mean she doesn't truly love him? Because she believes she could have only ever truly loved one person. And I I just think it's a, a really, really bad take. But again, it's not that Joan doesn't start to come around, but I really struggle to connect with her emotionally at that point but other than that really thoroughly enjoyed it i thought marry me at christmas was a good film and definitely worth checking out